we're running a little slow. Uh, so I'm going to try to take this or bridge this conversation in order to get us back on track, uh, in part because we have some exposure to it already from the previous discussion. And you have to interact with the commons and conductor, both in this project and also to register. So you have some familiarity with, uh, with this infrastructure. So let me just give you a quick lowdown up here. I gave this slide already before, talks about how the infrastructure of the Libreverse is somewhat complicated. There's a lot of technologies off of it. It could be daunting, it could be overwhelming, and I understand that. Uh, however, it does provide a, a, the most powerful infrastructure uh, available in order to be able to address these things, in part because we know what practitioners need because we are practitioners. Uh, it doesn't mean that we are not constantly developing it, constantly expanding it. For example, our accounting for infrastructure will be updated in the next week or two, um, but we're very happy with what the Libreverse uh, puts in place. So um, for those of you that have been in the OER uh, landscape for multiple years, um, you should hopefully have recognized that OER is complicated. Uh, uh, it has a lot of wheels turning, uh, and it has a lot of complexities in order to be able to master. So you have legal issues, you have ethical issues, accessibility issues, remixing issues, curation issues, shared corpus issues, project management infrastructure, shareholders portals, printing issues, homework issues, learning management systems, communities of practice that need to be established, advanced technologies and utilizing them effectively, training, advocacy, building OER, customizing OER, sharing OER, curating OER, and much, much more. Now, the, the approach up here is essentially saying in order to master the OER landscape, because of the way the complexities are set up uh, for ed tech and licensing and all their approaches there, it can be very daunting in order to keep track of. Uh, and over 15 years, we've tried a range of different technologies and approaches in order to be able to do that, both for facilitating our own development efforts, but also to facilitate other people's development efforts on the Libreverse. Uh, and the upshot from that is the Commons and Conductor System, which again, I mentioned before, it's a very peculiar name that is organized around two facets. One is the commons on the front end, where you can go through and look at the, uh, the corpus and peruse it as necessary, and the conductor on the back end, where you sign in in order to get access to a range of different uh, components. One of the key aspects behind here is that you can use it for project management tools, which has been very effective for communication, centralized, uh, repository of content, um, because invariably when we build a, uh, a resource, we leave and then we come back a year or two later, we don't have an idea about what's the landscape for that specific resource, what's necessary in order to improve it, how do we actually want to address it. Um, so the Commons and Conductor is our solution to that. Uh, and we're very excited about that because it saved our lives. It also saved our inboxes, although I understand, again, your inboxes got a little busy from, from this infrastructure and it made things centralized in order to facilitate these things. So uh, in the next uh, five to seven minutes, I just want to uh, go through the commons and conductor uh, infrastructure. And the best thing may uh, be in order to address that with the Libreverse itself. So actually, let me, let me go to the front end, uh, the front part of the back end. So this is uh, uh, my interface. Um, actually, I'm sorry, let me go. This is the commons, the front end of the central instance of the commons and conductor, which is what we refer to as the Libra commons, the ones that we that's built for us. So we can go through and do a search off of here uh, and find things through, you know, close to two and a half uh, thousand pages of uh, uh, books of content, but we have loads and loads of other individual modules that are not um, shown here because these are collections off of here. So I can come in, I can look at uh, partners that we have in order to say, okay, show me all the OpenStax books so that we have all the ASCCC, the Associates uh, Center of the California Community College or all Lumen Learning or so in order to be able to, to find that. The same thing with uh, parsing through homework and under development. This gives me a snapshot of other projects that are under development. Um, uh, and then I can look at that project's uh, back page if I happen to um, have access to it or, or not. Um, so that's fine and that's dandy, um, but the, it's the back end that's the real power uh, house that we have here. Um, I, I should mention that any individual campus can come in and have their own infrastructure. For example, Lee is gonna be presenting soon. This is Evergreen Valley uh, uh, College's uh, uh, Campus Commons. 
So they have a range of projects that are in development. As soon as they get published, they then become available in the conductor where you can go through any of these things and see a snapshot of snippets that are useful for addressing that, including uh, if you have some uh, reviews on there, if you have a homework infrastructure in place, you can download your files, your PDF, um, you know, your LMS infrastructure for Campus Commons. You can see uh, your table of contents, a summary, and then we have a learning infrastructure, sorry, licensing infrastructure that shows you all the pages that we have and the licensing associated with that at the page level. That facilitates better remixing across multiple licenses rather than saying a single license is applicable for the entire book. That's a topic for a different uh, state, a different time, but I want to talk about the, actually I'm going to go to this project here, Beginning Healthcare for Spanish OER. Um, so it's a project that we started supporting a couple of years ago. Um, and it's a, any project that you create ideally should have a conductor page for it. Any project that becomes compiled and becomes a book in the commons has to have a conductor project uh, for it, a back page, it would be what Wikipedia would call it. And that gives us an overview of the status of three things, project development, peer review, and accessibility. It gives you the ability to keep track of project properties, the source properties, communication off of here. You can add various members of your team. You can facilitate communication between members of your team, as you guys know, via emails. You can make threads up. Uh, when you make these threads, you can then have a, a concerted discussion between different people, uh, and you can decide on who you actually want to get the emails associated with that, which is what I had asked many of you guys to switch over so emails were not sent out to everybody on the team. You can then upload files. You can decide how those files are organized uh, and who gets to see them, whether they're all users, only verified instructors, like for example, for question banks that you don't want other instructors to do, uh, or you don't want students to have access to, or just to the team members that are registered to the assignment. Yeah. You can then make tasks. You'll see more of these tasks before, and those tasks you can then assign to different people in order to do different things, and you can make subtasks. You can do things uh, like viewing uh, these things from the perspective of a Gantt plot. If you prefer to uh, view uh, view these things from uh, Gantt plots and organized it in that way or via calendars. You also have a workflow. Uh, we have a mechanism to facilitate peer review. So you can create the rubric for your course and then put out, the, not your course, your resource, you can put it out there, and then the community can actually provide feedback, whether they're students or their faculty, and you can decide how you actually want to participate, uh, uh, view these things. The one thing that we'll emphasize is that in contrast to other infrastructures that have reviews, uh, we believe that reviews are dynamic and only applicable during the time that they haven't been addressed. So if someone gives actionable information for a review, and you change your resource to address it, that review no longer has any merit. It should not be out there. It's not applicable in order to be able to describe that. So we need to curate not just our OER content, but our OER reviews. And that's a key difference between how we handle reviews and other how other people handle reviews. Um, the, I will mention or, or end with accessibility. Accessibility is a key component, like I mentioned before, in terms of how we proceed. We have an infrastructure set up in order to facilitate tracking of what was tested what page was tested for what topic. So our accessibility uh, consultant, the one that um, I mentioned earlier on, has 81 criteria used in order to evaluate compliance of content to uh, 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 WCAG 2.1. Those can be separated into things that require a human to evaluate, things that a computer can evaluate, and things that are connected with the platform. Now the platform, that's our problem. We address that. But we can take these things and identify, for example, as all the alt text for the images under 150 characters. I can use a bot in order to go through that, go through every single page and identify if there are any issues associated with an image that's subject to that. And if it does that, it will just click it automatically and say these things are handled properly. And now you have a conformance uh, review matrix that is about an order of magnitude more complicated, but more powerful than a traditional checklist that's oftentimes put out there in other, other people in the community. But this also gives us the ability to go back and see what is the state of affairs for this book. Say, so did we take this page and did we check to see if all the alt texts are meaningful? Well, that requires a human for doing that. 
This is where you can use students effectively if you have them well-trained, that they can go through and check these things individually and not require a um, um, individual ad hoc review infrastructures. And this is one of the things that we're working on in order to facilitate a center for allowing, at least in California, um, uh, the students, oftentimes from the UC Davis Disability Center, to come in and review these things for OER that's generated for the state in order to move things forward uh, off of it. It is, again, far more detailed than anything else out there, but it's far more powerful than anything out there. Uh, and it can be very useful in order to show full compliance and identify what needs to be addressed for OER that's that's there. Okay, so um, I'm a few minutes over. Even though I give you a very abridged version of the comments and conductor, there's lots of things that we're going to be folding into the comments and conductor. Uh, I just don't have time in order to address that, but because you're going to be interacting with the comments and conductor multiple times during this week, um, I encourage you to explore around, uh, check it out, see what you like. Um, and if you have any questions about any of these things, please let us know and we can certainly address them. With that, I'll end this brief overview of the comments and conductor uh, and I'll then hand it off to the next speaker.